Hi, welcome to Simply Maker channel. Today I would like to show you, how do I add a switch, to my old Sony NPF battery adapter. I mainly use it with a battery dummy to power my camera. The adapter has been laying around in my dry cabinet for quite some time. I rarely use it because my job is mostly a still image. I started using it quite a lot, when I started filming a video for this channel. As you may know how fast Sony camera batteries are drained out when shooting a video. I use the adapter with an F770 battery which works extremely well. I can shoot entire videos with a single charge. The only problem is the adapter has no switch. As you see the LED light is turned on as soon as I insert the battery. So when I break from shooting I have to take the battery out. I just don't feel comfortable when the battery is running while I'm not using it. And I have to put the battery back to start shooting another session. It's quite annoying. I think it will be more convenient if it just has a switch. The output from my fully charged F770 battery is about 8.2 volts. And my camera use around 0.7 amps. So, it should be okay to use the small rocker switch I currently have. Start with opening the adapter. There are two screws that hold the two parts of the case together. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to unscrew them. Another one is not coming off. Just leave it, but make sure that screw is already loosening from the part. Use small flat head screwdriver to remove the fuse compartment under the adapter. To separate the part, use cell phone opening tools. I also have had this for a long time. I think they came with an iPod replacement battery. Start with the loosest seam near the DC outlet jack. Insert one of the tools into the seam around the corner. Use another tool with an angled tip. Push the tip into the largest open seam on the side and gently slide it along the seam until the part is loose. Repeat the process on each side until the parts are separated. There are some rooms on the negative side. I will wire the switch between the battery input and the PCB. I use a KCD11 rocker switch. The recommended cut hole from the datasheet is 13.5mm by 9mm. I roughly mark a cut line with a caliper. Then use a combination square to draw vertical lines. I use a caliper to remeasure the depth, to make sure that the switch will fit. Then use the square to draw a horizontal line, about 4 mm from the edge. Loosens all the PCB screws. and carefully removes the PCB from the shell. Use a wire cutter to cut the black wire. Then solder out the other wire. I use a utility knife to trace along the horizontal mark line. Trace for a few strokes. This will let the plastic crack straight along the cut line. Then I use a small hobby saw. Cut down along the vertical line. Until it touches the horizontal mark line. To be safe, I cut a little smaller than the mark. I also cut some more strokes in between.
Use a small nose plier to remove the excess plastic. Then use a coarse metal file to widen the hole until it fits the switch. Now, use the top part cut hole to mark the bottom part cut line. It's a bit tricky to mark the exact line because the parts are split. And the space for a switch is quite limited by the component inside. So it's a good idea to cut it a bit smaller, and carefully widen it up by metal file. Use the utility knife and hobby saw, to cut the hole along the mark, by using the same process as the top part. After trying to fit the switch into the cut slot, I just found that the depth is not deep enough. I need to trim out the plastic plate that used to hold the thumb nut. So, use the switch to mark the depth needed to trim out. Use a square to draw a parallel line along the plate edge. Then use a hobby saw to cut out the excess plastic. Finish it with a metal file to flatten the cutout edge. Trim off the plastic tongue on the unused switch pin. Reassembly the plate to the shell. Make sure that switch fits into the cut slot. Then screw in both screws and tighten them up. Now, we will start wiring the switch to the shell. At first, I think I will use the old wire to connect the input to the switch. But the wire needs some more slack to allow the battery pin to move. So we need to remove the old wire from the pin, and replace it with a longer one. Use a soldering iron to weld out the old wire. I use about 4 cm black 18 AWG wire. Weld one end to the battery pin, and another end to the switch pin. Another switch pin will connect to the black wire from the PCB. Now, we finished wiring the switch on the negative side. Before putting back the PCB into the shell, we need to reconnect the positive wire. Insert the white wire into the pad hole and weld it to the PCB. Put back the PCB to the shell. Make sure that the LED is fit into the hole on the front. When everything is back in place, screw in and tighten all the screws. Use isopropyl alcohol to clean up the marker line, and also the PCB if needed. Reassemble the top and bottom shells together, starting by inserting the DC outlet jack into the slot. Then align both parts and make sure that all components inside fit into their place, especially the new wire from the switch. Then carefully press on one side of the shell until it snaps. 
repeat it on another side until the shell fit together. Finally push the switch into the slot. Screw all the screws back in. Now it's time for the test. I think it's working as planned. I think that's all. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the comment. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.